Put the gloves on, put the goggles on. On dessert, Jane's next task is to make her milk ice cream using liquid nitrogen. Don't be afraid. <laughs> At minus 196 degrees Celsius, it freezes the milk mixture solid in a matter of seconds. Oh, like Harry Potter. Never ever used anything like this before. I mean, you've seen me in the MasterChef kitchen, I don't even use a sous vide machine, so for me, this is a bit of a, a, bit of a departure from the norm. She must then gently reheat and re-whip the ice cream to attain the perfect creamy consistency. I want to reach that perfect temperature okay. so it's smooth. Just like when an ice cream machine oh, does, okay. just a little bit faster. That's good. Milk and honey, I mean, it just doesn't give anything away at all. Who knows with that one? That's an exciting one. To be able to have a smooth transition and keep the guests excited all the way through and then finish really high up on a, on a dessert, it's a huge challenge. You look very calm and organized, Jane. <laughs> we hope. I'll tell you what, I think this is the most complicated one out of the lot, this is. Just make sure, press it down so when it goes to the dining room, it, doesn't, it yeah. still looks like that. All right, Neil. OK. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. OK, Jane. Yeah. Well done. Thank you, chef. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're feeling good? I am, yes, yeah. You did a really good job. Thank you. Thank That's you really very awesome. Much. If you'd told me at the beginning of this experience that I would have put something up like that, I don't think I would have believed you. I thought I would have been a mess on the floor. Jane has served milk and honey. A milk and bee pollen ice cream with a liquid honey centre on a honey custard base, topped with shards of dehydrated milk foam. Ah, wow, awesome. <laughs> Sometimes all you got left is laughter. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you can do is just laugh at it. Beautiful honey, it's really aromatic. Lots going on in that. And then there's the salt as well, which just gives it another element. There's all these little explosions mm. of flavor in your mouth. Yeah, delicious. It's a hard dish to pull off, to get all the temperatures right, to get all the layers right, to get the fragrances right, and, and to keep you, know, keep you excited all the way to the end, to the last bite. So she did very well, I think. It's the dessert that once you break into it, it just kind of keeps on giving more and more as you go along. Incredible. And what a finale of, of a, a three brilliant dishes. Oh, that is divine. Yeah. It's really, really very, very good, isn't it? And then that sort of <laughs> sharpness, a little bit of salt around the outside as well. I mean, a huge amount of work for Jane. That's actually my favourite dish. That's a, that's a surprise. Hi. Jane, well done. What a great dish. Technically brilliant. Not something I'm sure you do every day. <laughs> what do you do every day, Jane? I'm a mum. I've got four children, so yeah, I've come straight out of cooking oh. at home. So today's been a doddle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a mum and four children. Easy day, easy day. <laughs> Incredible amount of technique gone into it for something that seems so, so simple. We thought it was delicious. That was fantastic. Well a done. real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very emotional to walk in the room and get that feedback at the end. I, I thought I was going to cry, which would be mortifying in front of those chefs, wouldn't it? That was a real dream to be able to do that. Amazing. You've been set a brief to make one elegant, stylish, beautiful dish without using any animal products. That's no meat, fish, 
or dairy. Purely plant-based food. Brilliant. We have invited a special guest chef in today, a classically trained French chef who held a Michelin star for 12 years. And now, in his London restaurant, offers a completely plant-based menu. Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Alexis Gautier. Hello. It's very difficult to be creative with plant-based, but it offers you a lot of different aspects that probably never been uh, used before. So I will be looking for a lot of creativity and hopefully in each one of you, there will be a lot of good things coming out. I think with this dish, I want to show that simple things can look fine dining, can taste amazing. I know what I'm doing and I love what I'm doing. So what's there to worry about? So the plant-based dish really inspires you? Is that natural for you? Very natural. I grew up uh, in a farming family and we had animals, but they served a purpose. They gave us milk, but uh, we didn't eat meat that much. So we ate a lot of vegetables, a lot of uh, fruit. So I feel very comfortable and I love eating these things. Irini is staying true to her roots, the food that she loves, the food of Greece. She's taking a classic stuffado, a stew, usually with some meat. But instead of meat, Irini's using chestnuts. She's serving that with a fava puree. Fava, it's like a dried bean, and the puree should be similar in texture to a hummus. It should be smooth, but with a little tiny bit of texture, and then it needs to be flavoured really well. My concern right now is how do you serve a stew as wet as stafaro with a puree like fava on a plate and make it look fantastic? But to be fair, if anybody can, you really can. I love my dish and I hope that the judges love it all. Just five minutes left, please. Semi-final up for grabs. <sighs> I've tried the flavor so far and everything has worked the way I want it to. Time's up. Stop, please. <sighs> Irini, would you like to bring your plate here, please? Irini Stefado stew is made with sun-dried tomatoes, shallots and chestnuts. Served with Santorini fava pea and truffle puree, charred spring onions, pickled mushrooms, Brussels sprouts, a balsamic reduction, and truffle shavings. This plate looks beautiful. This combination of color, it's very appetizing. So well done for that. The elements are well cooked. Very well cooked. There is a combination of sweetness with cinnamon and the chestnut, it's, it's surprising. The onion is nice and it melts in the mouth, it's still juicy. So personally, I like it, I like it. I think your stafaro is lovely and rich using sun-dried tomatoes, you get that concentration of sweet but sharp flavor. The chestnuts have a decent bite to them. I think the texture's good, I think the flavor's good, I think it's original. I think it looks like a dish you could sell in a restaurant. I think it's a very good round, Arini. Thank you. What I really love are the Brussels sprout leaves that have still got a real crunch with a little puddle of balsamic in, because it starts really sweet and finishes bitter, which I think is really clever. I love your fava puree. I love, love that. When you eat it, it's comforting. It's comforting because this is the kind of food you cook at home, but it really reflects that. You know, that lovely warming feeling when you feed somebody and he likes it. <laughs> One hour's gone.
Shalina, on a day like today, you must have some mango. Where's the mango? Yeah, I'm using... <laughs> I am using mango. Um, my first dish is a mango milfoy with white chocolate and rum sorbet and a dolce de leche caramel slice. The next dish is going to be a um, tapioca pudding with passion fruit and coconut milk. Um, I'm making a ricotta bake with a palm sugar ice cream on top. You have a beaming smile. Yeah, I know. I actually feel pretty good today. I've got my mangoes and I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> good luck, Shalina. Mango, jelly, white chocolate, sorbet and rum. I think it's a wonderful idea. Then a piece of cake that goes with it. I just hope that cake doesn't become all crummy and watery in your mouth with that sorbet and the jelly. Shalina's tapioca and passion fruit with baked ricotta slice. Sounds very interesting. Tapioca, if you overcook it, you do get the frog spawn effect. I love baked cheese, and the passion fruit is the acidic lime which she's got there. So, flavour wise, I think uh, this is looking good. Let's see how the textures work. That tastes like it looks, Shalina. There you go. Thank you very much. This looks lovely. Shalina's first pudding is palm sugar ice cream sitting on top of a spiced biscuit and baked ricotta in passion fruit tapioca with coconut milk and red currants. I think Shalina's put a lot of effort into her presentation here. Everything looks uh, pleasing to the eye, and I just want to dive into it and start eating. Love the tapioca. It's nicely cooked. It's got a really nice flavour of um, passion fruit coming through. I get the lovely ricotta cheese. As a dish, I think it has everything that I'm looking for. You know, from the presentation to the delivery of the flavour, it's definitely ticked all the boxes for me. Wow. It looks great, and it is a demonstration of fantastic pastry technique. I love the sweetness of the tapioca and the richness of the passion fruit running through it. And then the spice coming from the biscuit. I think the flavours are fantastic. So, the mango meal foy. Those layers have got to be neat and tidy and, for me, uniform. You know, it's all about what we love. We love to be consistent and methodical and it has to be precise. You know what it is? Mango jelly cake. Go, Shalina. Let's go. Well done. Very well done. Thank you very much. Shalina's second dessert is a mango meal fouille set with rose water jelly, a dulce de leche caramel cake topped with a white chocolate and rum sorbet, served with strawberry coulis. Presentation. Again, very simple, but it looks good. I actually like the rose jelly. It's so delicate, and it's how, if I'm going to eat it, it's how I like it. The sorbets, you know, I can taste the rum there, but I can't taste the white chocolate, and it is a little granular as well. Yeah, I think it's definitely her, her weaker dish. I think the flavours on Shalina's plate are wonderful. If Shalina had made white chocolate and rum ice cream rather than sorbet, that dish would have been perfect, absolutely perfect. Generally, I think um, I did all right today. And is all right good enough, you know? That's, that's a thing at this stage. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm proud of myself. I think that's OK. <laughs> Tommy, you've got five minutes. You've got to get this on. 
Let's fry them oh. properly. Is that going to be ready in five minutes? Uh, yeah. We've got to get fish on, scallops on. Tart's done. Tart's done. I've All got right. the cream. I've got the sauce done. OK. I better leave you. I better leave you. Let you finish up. This is the last ever meal the contestants will serve up for John and Greg. It has to be perfect. Every single item on that plate has to be cooked properly. It has to be seasoned very, very well. It must be a clean flavour, which is crisp. The best meal of their lives. So, time up, guys. Come on, let's go. Plate up. Plate up, plate up. It's two and a half hours. is over. First up is Tommy. Throughout the competition, she's impressed with her inventiveness and passion. That is lovely. It is really delicious. Mm -hmm. I think you have a wonderfully inventive mind. The smoked duck starter. That lights my fires. It really does. But in her quest for originality, mistakes were often made. Tommy. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. It's dreadful, isn't it? So will she be able to execute her imaginative menu today and walk away a winner? She's taking a risk with a starter she's never cooked before. Ravioli of chicken mousse, foie gras and quince jam. I think it's a very attractive bowl of food. That appeals to me so much. I just hope chicken mousse with nuts, foie gras and a little bit of quince paste in there. It's a lot of flavours to take on. That's very good, Tommy. <laughs> That's very, very good. My, my heart was pounding for you. But it quick pounding. <laughs> but it quick the, the sweetness of the quince quickly goes away. I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it's it's nicely seasoned. The pasta is perfect. Absolutely perfect. A little crunch of nut in there and a, just the hint of the foie gras afterwards. That's a lovely bowl of food. How will her main course of John Dory, scallops, broccoli and salsa verde fare? I like the idea of potatoes, salsa verde and fish. It's cooked beautifully, this lovely sort of translucent, almost rainbow-like colour that comes across the top of it. I like the salsa verde. You have done what I thought you were going to do, and that is put anchovies in the salsa verde. And the anchovies with the broccoli, the anchovies with the fish, the anchovies with the potatoes, the anchovies with the scallops, holds the whole thing together. It's good. For dessert, it's an almond and quince bakewell tart. If I see, you know, see a tart like this, I, I, need, a, I need a pot of tea. Mm, I know. I came up with this idea, like, a couple of weeks ago, and I was so excited because I invented it. I felt like it was my thing. And I got so excited about it that I just put it on the menu. And then last night I was thinking, but it's not a pudding. It's a tea time tart. It's good. This quince jam. Inspired, I love it. I absolutely love it. Your pastry's very good, Thomasina. Oh, thank you. It's um, nice and buttery. Technically, good tart. You promised us refined cooking. Stop pretending you're gonna do it. Don't even go anywhere near refined cooking. Just keep cooking from the heart the way you do. Okay. Because what you do is absolutely lovely. And don't pretend to be anything else. Maximum five minutes. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Oh. Hello. Hello. Ping has called her dish the little things. 
Asian pulled pork bonbons, roast langoustine, mandarin potato, a langoustine sauce, and a clementine air. It's a reconstruction of a dish my um, husband made for me. And also the clementine is there because my daughter loves clementines. So it's a celebration of love. I love it. The way you cook the shellfish. I love it all. I love the composition. I love the tasting. I love everything. And I really love the love story. <laughs> because at the end, I'm sure that both Ferran and Rosel would agree with me, cuisine is that, I mean, uh, love. Ferran doesn't agree. Ferran doesn't agree. There are people full of love who cook really badly. Well done, Ping. Very good. I really like the balance of your dish. Because you have one product, the pork, which is fatty, you have a fish, and after that a fruit that has helped us to clean the mouth and degrease. And the truth is that technically it's really well done. And the mandarin air, duners, it is always very difficult. They normally do not have any flavor, but this is really well done. I don't know if you know that El Bulli is where we actually invented the airs. I know. The beauty and the beast here, it's really good. The croquette is... The beast, it's uh, something really coarse, and then the air and the langoustin are sensual and sophisticated. Really interesting. For me, the most important thing is that technically it's impeccable. Gracias, muchas gracias. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Oh, gracias. Not many people can say this, but I have cooked for Farhan Adria, the world's greatest chef. And I put it off. It's exactly what I want to present in terms of flavours, and um, it worked, and they like it, and that's all that matters to me. Oh, God, I'm drained.